southern charm of them salmon patties. Okay, I want this. I'm not playing hard to get, just leave. You didn't know what you were gonna get when you so were like, yay, vlogs are back. And then you're like, oh God, I forgot. She's so weird. Yeah, wait. That's all why? Water. Water. Honey. What's that? Uh, olive oil. Uh, otter oil. Olive oil. And salt. Like, can you do this plaster? That's olive oil. Water. Honey, and do and give me this. That's olive oil. Olive. That sugar into water. This is yeast. 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 That's what. It's the active ingredient. It's what makes the bread rise. Whoa! The gold looks so cool. We got alone for a few minutes. We need some flour. 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 I'll try not to spill it. Thank you. Sage advice. Don't spill it. Red flowers wasted. A little bit. Wait, is that flour? Yeah. But I thought I had. Hold on. It's not time, young Benjamin. Ew. My upside down thread up order is here. It's always an exciting time. I've already kind of forgotten what I ordered, so this is actually almost like a surprise unboxing because, well, I guess I kind of forgot what I ordered, so I'm excited to see what's in here. It's gonna be a surprise to me as well. In case you don't know, ThreadUp is the world's largest secondhand online retailer, and I find the best stuff, some of my favorite brands. This time, I wanted to see how many new with tags items I could find. And stick around because, of course, I have an amazing discount for you. Don't mind my cords from my microphone, but I want you to be able to hear me. So a little date night outfit. Both of these pieces are new with tags. You can see the tags hanging off the back of my skirt. This kind of denim chambray top is by a brand called Bella Dahl, D-A-H-L. The estimated retail price on this was $123, and I got it for $26.99 on ThreadUp, new with tags. It is very comfortable, I think very cute. This is from Zara. It has kind of a kimono kind of vibe. The slit goes all the way up to here, so that's why I say like this is a date night skirt. I might pair it with a different top, but I wanted to show you the top. This one was new with tags. The estimated retail price on this was $46 dollars and I got it for $21.99. Okay, this is definitely like an everyday kind of outfit for me. I love this skirt. It's like a tiered maxi skirt paisley print. I got my cowboy boots on. This is definitely like spring Angie vibes. This skirt again is new with tags. It's from Bloomingdale's, a brand called Aqua, and the estimated retail price on this is $76 and I got it for $28.99 on ThreadUp, new with tags. I think I might have found my birthday dress. This is again not something I'm going to wear every day, but I saw this and I just thought, oh my gosh, that would be such a great birthday dress for a birthday dinner or a date night with CR. This is definitely like a little, it's a little longer in the back, thank goodness. This is not a chasing kids dress, but holy cow, I absolutely love this dress, this shirt dress. It's from Anthropology. It's from a brand called Pilcro. It's new with tags. The estimated retail price on this is $127, and I got it for $42.99. I'm not a short dress gal, but I saw this and loved it and just thought it would be such a great birthday dress. Last but certainly Certainly not least, I absolutely love this top from Zara. Pearl detail on the wrists as well as on the neck and you can button it all the way on the neck like that and kind of get that Victorian era vibe if you want. And the estimated retail price on this was $47.90 and I got it for $20.99 on ThreadUp. And this is also, guess what? New with tags. All right, y'all, as per usual, I do think I found some really amazing deals. Think I kind of hit it out of the park as far as finding great pieces that were new with tags, but still affordable. As always, I favorite a bunch of stuff because, well, I can't buy everything that I like. So I favorite stuff for myself, but also for you guys. So you can check that out. And if you use that link and use my discount, 
discount code, you will get 35% off your first order plus free shipping. Definitely check that out down below. It's always a good idea to, you know, thrift more and waste less. I gotta save this thread up bag so I can send some stuff to them. Hold on, we're crooked. I am going to grease and flour the pans so that they are ready to receive the dough uh, while I give that a few more minutes to rise. And yes, I am now wearing a Canadian tuxedo because I wanted to wear this top, but I didn't want to wear it with leggings. So with jeans it goes, Canadian tuxedo, here we are. The uh oh, here comes Jessie. Were you a bad girl? Were you chasing chickens? Everybody's outside playing and having a popsicle and stuff, and I guess Jessie was chasing chickens, so she got sent inside. You wanna be outside with the kids? Were you chasing chickens, you bad girl? Jessie, don't look at me like that. Well, we're gonna try. All right, we're gonna make some salmon patties now. My, as a good Southern child, my mother used to make salmon patties. Did you ever have salmon patties growing up as a kid, CR? My mama made salmon pat. I don't think the first time I made them, they were very good because I just guessed at how to make them. We're not guessing today, my friends. We're following a recipe, but they're delicious. And even my kids who don't like, I mean, most of our kids like fish, but they, they like these. Okay, they're good. And don't, don't judge me, okay? They're made with canned salmon. You know, you get like canned chicken for uh, chicken salad sandwiches. This is canned salmon. And then you're supposed to use panko breadcrumbs. I only got a little bit left, so we're gonna also use just some regular ones, but panko are the best. And then we're gonna need some other stuff too. Oh, we're gonna need some cilantro, CR. You wanna get some out of the, I'll go get some in a minute, that the garden. We let the cilantro winter yeah. open. Sorry. <laughs> season. We let the cilantro overwinter in the garden and it took over, it exploded. It's out of control. It is a cilantro bush. We can make salsa till the end of time. And then I gotta get the bread also. So, ooh, do I wanna finish the bread before I do this? Mmm, mmm. Yeah, before we get all the oils and the grease out, I'm gonna go ahead and <coughs> knead the dough, mix it up and get it into the pans. Did you put an apron on? Uh, yeah. Up. Real funny, you're a wise guy. You wanna show the camera your apron instead of me? Go back there, will you? Tie it up for itself. The southern charm of them salmon patties. <laughs> Are you tying it? Oh uh, yeah, you're holding onto it. We also be making some bread, y'all. Some some Paula Dean bread. That's how now. she talks. Well, now we're gonna make some bread, y'all. <laughs> she really like draws it out. Okay, this is taking forever. Are you tying it? I did it. Okay, it's sort of tied. Why are you putting it up there? I'm sorry. Why are you putting it up there on you? Shock by. I'm protecting my private parts. Okay. Do me up. What are we what are we getting our hands dirty with here? You just blew your nose and blew snot all over your face and have not washed your hands. So we're you, good. my friend, we're good. are touching all over nothing. All over here. Nothing. We're gonna roll that beautiful bean footage. You remember that commercial? Roll that Do you not do you don't remember? Guys, please somebody help me out in the comments. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Y'all, oh, was it Bush's Baked Beans? Bean. And it had the dog, that maybe that dog was a Boykin. It was an all brown spaniel kind of dog. And they would say, he would talk about it and then he'd say, roll that beautiful bean footage. And it would be the B-roll of the beans. Okay, I, please. For I also distinctly remember the, do the chicken, the young and tender chicken. It was like a chicken nugget, chicken tender commercial. Do the chicken, no, the young and tender like chicken. Fish, like the fish stick commercial with the guy in like the raincoat, the yellow. Oh, Gordon's Fisherman. <laughs> That's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Wait, bring Footstool over here to say hello because I didn't show Footstool very well in the last video. Hi, Footstool. I don't want to touch you because I'm cooking. She's a little dirty, Footstool. 
She's looking her front up. She's in her tail. Yeah. Sultan. She said, my name is Sultan. I'm going to say it. But I'm also going to need half a cup of milk, two cups of bread crumbs, one cup of panko ones, one cup of regular. And yeah, we could make our own bread crumbs. I know. We ain't gonna deal with it. Two cups of bread crumbs. We're gonna need four large eggs, but these free loading chickens have only given us two. So we're gonna have to get two from the refrigerator, the grocery store. Free loading chickens. Can't believe they make me buy eggs sometimes. I'm gonna do all the dry ingredients first, then mix in the wet ones. Okay, we're gonna have one teaspoon of salt if it wants to come out ish one teaspoon of black pepper we're gonna need one teaspoon one teaspoon of onion salt one teaspoon of onion powder not onion salt onion powder one teaspoon of parsley let's run out to the garden and get some cilantro i told you it was wild y'all other than uh weeds and a few dahlias nothing else is growing in here right now other than this cilantro so let's grab some that should be plenty Heated up the pan. Now we're gonna add some vegetable oil. Probably should make these patties ahead of time. Never that smart, okay? So we're just gonna make sure they're nice and smooshed together. Kind of shape them into a ball and then smash them flat. But you wanna make sure that they're stuck together because they'll come apart in the pan. Some vegetable oil that get hot. And the good thing is the salmon, I mean, it's already cooked, you know? It's ready to eat, so. You don't have to worry so much about cook time and stuff like that. Ooh, my pasta water's boiling. I gotta drop the pasta. Let me get four patties made and drop the pasta real fast. I ain't no Julia Childs, y'all. Why is the horse trailer in the arena? So you could work on loading what? Loading it. It's not what it's safe to do. I see. Yeah, that makes sense to not do that elsewhere. I got salmon juices. Ooh, smells good already. I can smell it from. I don't think it's good. Huh? I don't think it smells good. It tastes good. The salmon pies, are they cooking right now? Doesn't smell good when they're in this bra form, but what you can smell right here? It smells like onions and fish. It is onions and fish. My mom used to make this salmon patties with fried zucchini for lunch. Of course, when I was little, I didn't appreciate fried zucchini. I didn't like it. All the fried zucchini I missed out on, but I didn't eat it. Yeah, you guys like zucchini. I was a picky child, very picky child. Thought that might work for flipping. It don't. So flip those gentler. Okay, I won't dance. Flashy. I love salmon patties. Is Shelby training Aslan? No, that's Peaches. I thought that was Aslan. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
My whole like garden area is just an absolute disaster. It's a mess. But I was coming out here to go through some of my seeds and start kind of mapping out and planning out my garden, gardens, plural, I suppose, all of the areas in which I will be planting things this season. You know when you try to use a bunch of different things and nothing is exactly working? I don't know. I guess I'm the kind of person that I'm like, I'll just, I'll make it myself. I'll do it myself. I'm like the stepsister in Cinderella when she can't get the, I'll make it fit. So all that to say, I made my own garden planner, like garden organizer, planner, all of that so that I can track everything and just have all of the pages that I need in a garden planner. And so I have added my new garden planner to the shop if you want to check that out. And I'm still finishing like the binding and stuff on mine because I do like spiral bind mine at home, though you can totally like take it to Staples or something like that and have it printed and bound. Once I'm finished with that, I'll share with you guys and give you like a little flip through. But I did also create something that's totally free that is like a companion planting guide. So I will link that down below in the description box if you want that. It's something that I feel like the first year or two that I had my garden, I didn't really understand. And it's really like what to plant next to what. Uh, what plants go well together and what plants do not go well together because there's certain things like planting marigold randomly throughout your garden that can help keep pests down and there's just certain pairings of plantings that uh, will help the plants to flourish and then there's pairings of plantings that will the plants they don't like each other you know mean girls right mean girl plants so anyways that's totally free and I will link that down below uh, if you would like it but I am, um, let me see here. I've got, so I wanted to show you. Ah, some of these bags have been torn and are a mess, but these are all from Eden Brothers. So this is what I'm trying to decide for my wild, wild flower garden. If I want to do the bee's knees, the pollinator wildflower seed, I also have flowery fields forever. Then I have the South Carolina mix. Well, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but for Christmas, I got CR a flow hive. So he has been talking about wanting to keep bees. I don't know if you guys remember a couple of years ago, a few years ago now, my gosh, it was probably what, 2019? More than a couple of years ago now, when we took the family to Texas and we went to Nature Nates and we went and saw like how they make the honey and everything and we all, had like our bee suits and we learned how to take the combs out and get the honey and how the whole process works. And it was really fun. It's a family owned company and they were just the sweetest, honestly, like the most welcoming and hospitable and like kind people. We had such a good time. Our kids had such a good time. They invited us to their home. It was just a wonderful trip, a fun trip to Texas, to Dallas. Ever since then, it's really helped me to like squash some of my fear of bees because I don't know if y'all know this or not. I've probably talked about it. Not, I haven't squashed my fear of wasps, so this wasp needs to get the hell out of here. Listen, sir, I'm filming right now. Sir, 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 I'm not gonna make eye contact. Please stop, go away. Okay, I'm gonna try to pretend like he's not there. Maybe if I ignore him, he'll go away. That never works, right, for dudes. I'm not playing hard to get, just leave. So when I was a kid, I was riding a bike outside with my sister. We were riding our bikes, I think, or scooters. I don't know what we were doing, but a bee flew like right into my eye and it stung me right on like the inside of my eye area. And basically like had it been just like a smidge over, I probably would have been blinded. It was like in my eye, okay? My whole eye swelled up, it was not pretty. And ever since then, I've been just afraid of bees, okay? I've been afraid of bees. But going to Nature Nates and like experiencing that whole thing and beekeeping and it made me less fearful of them. And then ever since we moved here and I've had a garden and I've really come to like not just know through textbooks, but like understand in very real life how important bees are to the entire process of food and flowers and all of that, I've come to, to love bees. Uh, I'm still like, don't wanna be stung, don't like that. Uh, my girl, right, that traumatized our whole generation. CR wanted to keep bees, so I got him a flow hive. So that's why I'm thinking, wow, do you see how I squirreled all the way around and we're squirreling right back to why I think that maybe I should do the uh, bees knees pollinator mix. I didn't say this, you're like, that doesn't make any sense. The beehive up at the top garden. That's where it's going to go, up there. I would like for them to want to stay. Keeping bees, as I understand it, the hardest part is like they don't leave. It's keeping them, like getting them to stay. I know a lot of people who've tried years and they just, every time they set it up, the bees leave. So I want to make sure they're happy up there. So I'm thinking about planting that mix 
that's my thoughts, okay? So hard, right? Like, can you imagine what it's like to be inside my head? Because I only tell you like a quarter of the things that are like shoop, 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 all the time. My uh, South Carolina blend is from Urban Farmer. So Eden, uh, Eden Brothers is where some of my other mixes are from, but my South Carolina blend is from Urban Farmer. And I do also have a uh, bird and butterfly blend from Urban Farmer as well. Now I'm excited because I've been using this system to store my flower seeds and all my seeds, not just flower seeds. Can you tell I like flowers? I always say that. I'm not forgetting about the vegetables. They're just not as exciting sometimes as the flowers. This is what I've been storing them in. But I've come to understand that having it be clear and where like UV rays and stuff can get through can be harmful to the seeds. So I ordered a new like metal seed box that is not see-through that I'm hoping these will still fit inside of, but it's just like an outer shell of protection. I think that's being delivered today. So I'm gonna do some seed sorting and organizing and planning with my new garden planner and kind of map out and figure out exactly what I want to plant where and what's a priority. The other big thing that I'm working on, which I don't know if you can see back here behind me, is a total disaster. This garage has just gotten out of control. It's an organized chaos, but it is still an, just a total chaos. Uh, and we need to go through and get this thing cleaned out. So that's a big project on our list. And then I also want to share with you guys, like some of the, you know, we've talked about this before, like prepping, but practical prepping. I'm a middle of the road kind of person. I want to know that in the event of a natural disaster, or maybe not so natural, but a disaster one way or the other, that we have the supplies to at least uh, feed our family, get, make sure our family has water and some basic medical supplies. So I've really been like working on that and trying to, cause there's so much out there and I follow some people that I really enjoy, but they definitely like anything else, right? Um, sort of, you know, walk on the side of like a little bit of fear mongering stuff, which I don't love because I just don't think it does us any good to live in a place of that much fear about things where we feel like we have to like have every last little thing and prep for every last little thing. Because the truth is, I mean, let's just be honest here for a hot second, okay? Have you all read Annie Jacobson's new book? We talked about it on a live I did recently that it was coming out. I got it, I got the physical copy and the audiobook because well, Annie Jacobson is one of the people that I feel like if you're going to listen to an audiobook from someone, it should be her because her voice is just chef's kiss amazing. Um, I wish she would read me bedtime stories every night. Her newest book, Nuclear War, a scenario. It'll scare the pants off you, but in some ways it also like reminds me that if something like that were to happen, we all gone, y'all. We all, that's it. We're all gone. There is no bunker. There is no shelter. There is no amount of preparedness that's going to see you through that. There's just not. And so in some ways that is terrifying, but also comforting. And also secretly, I just feel like if I'm going to go in something like that, I want to be in the first wave, the day of, the, the, the big psh, gone, you know, instantly, rather than like the days and weeks to follow. Mm -mm, no, thank you. So in some ways, I'm comforted by the fact that we live very near the Savannah nuclear plant, which is a decommissioned plant, but it's a disposal site. And it would be a, a target to hit because there's so much product there that's been disposed. So while there's not nukes there there's byproducts and disposal anyways we're getting dark in this y'all and i don't mean to but i'm just saying so to me that's why i say practical prepping because i am prepping for natural disasters hurricanes tornadoes uh you know power grids going out where we just lose our ability to access modern technologies and so that could very well happen so i want to be prepared for that because i have eight children so that's why i'm into like the practical prepping so we're gonna talk about a little bit of that stuff i gotta get this whole area i've just like been throwing stuff back here and it's got to be better organized and sorted as well as the rest of this insane garage okay this garage is just out of control all right you didn't know what you were gonna get when you were like yay vlogs are back and then you're like oh god i forgot she's so weird so weird. Welcome back, y'all. In other news, uh, I think Sierra and I are going to, we're gonna go on a little date night tonight. We're gonna go to dinner tonight. I think I'm gonna wear one of those cute skirts that I got from ThreadUp. I'm pretty excited about that. But I think I convinced him if I can get everything prepped today during the day to tonight after we go on our little date night dinner 
to go over to Tractor Supply and get some chicks. We've ordered ducks and chickens from various online places, uh, you know, hatcheries, essentially. I say that like we ordered them from Amazon. We didn't. We ordered them from like online hatcheries. I gotta say, like our hardiest chickens, the ones that have lasted <laughs> the longest have been the golden comets, you know, the ones that we got from Tractor Supply. I think we're gonna go back there. The last time I was there, I need to look and see what day they get chick deliveries. When I was there last week, they had a bunch of pullets. So I don't, I've learned my lesson. Homie don't do straight runs. Uh, straight runs means they're non-sexed, so they could be male, they could be female, you don't know. I do not trust my uh, chick sexing skills enough to be able to determine that. So some of the breeds that I would like to try only come in straight runs. Probably gonna get much more of the same, though the only thing I am thinking about ordering through an online hatchery is a couple more Polish chickens because I just love having them around. Their eggs are small. They're not as small as silky eggs and more of like a medium size egg, I would say. So I started thinking today about like how old Tina is and I don't even know if y'all remember when she got hurt and we had to buy like this 3D printed chicken foot splint on Etsy and try to like splint her leg when she got hurt. It's been a wild ride with Miss Tina and because of that leg injury, she runs funny, which if I can ever catch it on video, it's hilarious. The other chickens run like one foot at a time like this and Tina runs like this, <laughs> you know, like two legs at a time like this, almost like a hop. It's very cute and funny. I can't even think about like something bad happening to Tina cause she's just, she's my Tina, you know? Here we go again on a tangent, all of that to say, if you guys have ever effectively like done surrogate hen mom, cause this is what I'm thinking. I'm gonna have the setup for the chicks cause I just don't want to risk it. I'm gonna have, you know, their whole like brooder setup. In an ideal world, because we're not getting, you know, 15 chicks, we'll probably get six. I'm thinking that is there a way that I can sort of give them to one of my broodier hens and let her raise them instead of me putting them in a brooder and then trying to go through the introduction process. I'm gonna do a little bit of research on that and then the introduction process is always the most stressful part to me because they are so they can be so mean to each other and they beat the ever loving snot out of each other and rip their combs and waddles and their chickens are cruel sometimes to each other. They'll kill other chickens just because they think that they're injured. They don't like them, they don't, you know, whatever. So like, ooh, I'd love it if we could like raise from the beginning as like a surrogate mom. So I'm gonna do a little bit of research on that and see if I can find out any uh, advice and I might, I might try to do that with them. So we might go add some chickies to the farm. So that'll probably be in the next vlog because this one's already like insanely long. And I'm gonna show you, okay, I don't know if that's a bee or a wasp, I told you, listen, don't make me eat my words about liking bees, okay? I got some roses. There's some right here in front of me. We picked these up last night on our little date to Home Depot because I want to create more of like a hedge of roses up by the front of the house. The red drift roses like this, I don't know if you can see the tag, but these are like ground cover. I'm hoping you can see that tag, but these are like ground cover roses. I wanna get those planted up by the front. Did add just for giggles you know we grabbed a couple of hanging <clears throat> strawberry plants because well last year the deer ate all of my strawberries for two years they've eaten all of my strawberries and also the kids tend to pluck the strawberries before they're ripe so i thought maybe we could avoid some of that i've still got strawberries in my garden over there that are coming back but i just thought let's just hang a few and see if we can get a little more life out of them by hanging them this is what the dogs do, man. They dig into the dirt right here to have a spot to lay down. There is a hydrangea somewhere. These poor hydrangeas, there's one right there. I don't know if you can see it. And then there's another one right here. And these ones are just not doing well. They don't get enough sun is what I think is the problem, as well as these dogs over here digging. Look, there's one right here. It's a tiny little blurp of a thing. And then these ones that are in containers right here on the front side, these are doing well fine so i think they just don't get enough sun on that other side which is such a bummer because sierra and i both were hoping that we could make like a whole hedge of hydrangeas and just have it be where there's like where there's like two places that you can enter this like pavilion gazebo area and we were going to like surround the rest with hydrangeas kind of like how our old porch was at our old house we both loved that so much but this side just doesn't get enough sun i don't think to grow hydrangeas so we'd have to have it just be on this front side i don't know we'll see 
All right, y'all, Sierra's outside mowing, making a ton of noise. So I guess that's my signal, my cue to end this video. Don't forget to check out ThreadUp and use my code to get that 35% off and free shipping on your first order. And you can find my favorites and see my picks as well. I'll put that link down below. That's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. And hopefully, maybe we'll have some cute baby chicks to share with you in the next video. And maybe, hopefully, I will have some success with the surrogacy of a hen raising my chicks for me so I don't have to. Okay. All right.